Hello. I am here to tell you today a new way about how the past can completely come and wreck your life even without you knowing about it. A lot of people who write to me will tell me oh, I've got this stuff from the past that can really see how it's poisoning their lives. I'm talking about how the past can be like the stealth bomber coming in and totally wrecking it. So this is called the 90 10 reaction, like 90%, 10%. And it's not a mathematical formula. It's an indication that you're feeling distress or outrage or some other really challenging feeling in the present, but actually it's coming from the past. And even though it seems that you're just so justified in feeling the intensity you are, actually the, bul the massive bulk of that, like an iceberg, is coming from the past. And I have an example from me from my own life, which I wanted to share with you because it looks so random on the surface. A phone triggered my past. And what happened was that I ordered the phone and it didn't even get sent out till over two and a half weeks later. It took over three weeks to arrive. And I was furious about it. My phone so important for my work and I really need my phone. How dare they not send my phone? and so on and so forth. And I was gently called on this by my beloved partner uh, who said, aren't you kind of overreacting a bit? And that's another thing about the 90-10 rule. If you get feedback from people that you're overreacting, there are, there are kind of two strands of this. You are not overreacting in general. It's just that what you're reacting to in the present is this much in the present and that much from the past. Yeah. So it's not an overreacting, but it's going to look like it to the people around you. Okay? And so what it was connected to was my outrage because I did my best to try to rectify that and make it right. And it, it didn't happen and I couldn't do it. And what that actually triggered was something that had been hitherto unknown lurking about in my unconscious. Many of you know I have had uh, severe trauma in my early childhood, and I have genuinely detoxified and de-traumatized myself from that and forgiven the people that did that stuff to me. And yet there were other parts in there that were still feeling very outraged and wanting justice. And I hadn't known that. I hadn't known that. And so my distress was my gift, my outrage was my gift, as long as I was willing to pay attention to the 90-10 rule and not get defensive about someone saying, dear, don't you think it's just a tad over the top? And I used the example of the phone because it was so random, it, it made it a very powerful example. But there are many examples from our everyday, especially, especially with relationships. And it comes in in so many different ways. I can only talk to you about a few of them with you here now. And one of them is when you're in a relationship and one person comes in with their iceberg and that little bit of thing happens and they react from that whole kit and caboodle, which, by the way, is also called baggage. So that 90 tending is baggage. And the other person gets all confused. It's like, hey, there's, there's nothing I can say here to make this better. There's nothing I can do here to make this better. I don't understand what's going on here. I'm really doing my best here. And then for the other person, powerlessness sets in, hopelessness sets in, anger sets in, and a withdrawal. Withdrawal of commitment, withdrawal of intimacy. Yeah, This is poison, man, for a relationship. Even if the two of you really love each other, that baggage can totally mess up your relationship. And even if you're single, this whole 90-10 thing can still wreck your relationships. And one of the ways how is, first of all, it could prevent your ideal relationship from ever really happening because you've got all that stuff in the way and you're looking at it through your baggage instead of being with that person to assess if they're even worth the first date. Okay? The second thing is the kind of people you choose for your first, second, and third date, or et cetera. Because I get a lot of mail from people who say, why is it, how do I do that, that I wind up having the same guy from, or, or woman with a different name and a different body, but it's like they're the same person. And, you know, this is why. Because these patterns are running. This is what you're expecting from the world, which is not very pleasant stuff. Check it out. Get rid of it. Get rid of it so you can have someone new and something really fresh in your life. You deserve it. 
So it's really, really important, this 90-10 stuff. And so there are a few main takeaway points here. The 90-10 rule is real. It, it can so improve the quality of your life to humbly accept the 90-10 rule is operative probably every day of your life. Okay? Uh, so that's one. The second thing, really important, that your distress from the past is actually your gift because it's this big flag going off saying, hey, pay attention to me, pay attention to me. And so there's actually this massive doorway opening from your distress into a much, much better place. So by all means, say thank you to your horrible, intense feelings because they are your gift. They are their indications to you of where you need to put your attention. And even if you never consciously know what it is that's waving the flag around, we'll be talking in a minute about what you can do about it anyway. A third point on this is that it puts a whole new span, not just on relationships with intimate partners, but on family relationships too. And that when you, know, you get together with a family member, father, mother, uncle, grandfather, brother, sister, whatever, that both of you are coming in with your icebergs. <laughs> and you're both probably 90 tending all over the place. And to have compassion for the both of you for that. And to really recognize that what's actually in the present is probably very solvable and dealable without all the other stuff going on. So the more you do to let go of that other stuff, the easier it's going to be to be with those people that are in your life already. Yeah? The last thing before I set the challenge for you for the week is to, to answer, well, what can you do about it? So you've been humble enough to recognize the operation of the 90-10 rule in your life. You have been gracious and understanding and compassionate enough with yourself, maybe even to find out what it is or not. It doesn't matter if you consciously know or not. What next? Okay, two things. The first, first aid thing to do for yourself is to recognize if you are feeling distress of any kind, that's an indication that your thinking is distorted. So just back away from the problem. <laughs> Don't make any decisions. <laughs> Don't say all the stuff you'll say so eloquently that it will just wreck things up for later. Just back away. Zip it, it. zip it. <laughs> Even when, like, believe me, <laughs> there were so many emails I wanted to send over this. Just back away from it. And, and have compassion for yourself in recognizing that your thinking is disordered, distorted. And just recognize that it will pass. And that's the first thing. The second thing is to really excavate it. And a lot of people ask, you know, what to do and mention uh, traditional family counseling or counseling or therapy. Not all interventions are created equal. And you can spend a lot of time and a lot of money and, a, and, and years and years in these traditional methods that either don't work or take a really long time, really long time. And instead, you can save yourself all that time, all that money, for a fraction of the time, at a fraction of the cost. You can get yourself some tapping and training in, in the emotional freedom technique and other kinds of therapies like that. And that would just, you know, it's your money, it's your time, you decide. And the challenge for, I set for you for the week is either look over the past week or past whatever and very humbly assess, were there times when people were giving me feedback that I was overreacting? Or be attentive to this next week ahead. And just see when you get irked, <laughs> aggravated, annoyed, upset, any of that. And allow yourself to get curious. I wonder what it is from my past that is massively inflating this distress feeling in the present. No matter how right it seems to react to that in the moment, just trust that the 90-10 rule may well be in operation. So take care. Have a week full of curiosity, and I look forward to seeing you next week.